Hey, what's going on? This is Kext Next, and today I'm gonna show you a way that will not only allow you to get more realistic looking camera shake, but also give you more control over your effects. And I think that this is a simple but universal tip that every compositor should know. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. You can go up here to the composition button and create a new composition. Um, you can really make it any resolution that you want, but I'm going to go ahead and drop in another comp that I've already created into the composition button. We can go ahead and play this back and see what it looks like. It's pretty static, right? There's no camera shake. It's really, really lame looking. So what we want to do is hit P on the keyboard to bring up the position value. And we're going to go ahead and hold down Alt and click the stopwatch. And what we're gonna get up here is a little dialogue for us to type in our expression. In this case, we're gonna type in wiggle, open parenthesis, and then we can type a number. And the first number will be the frequency of your wiggle. So we can say, it'll wiggle nine times a second. Put a comma, space, and then the next number is gonna be how much it's going to wiggle. We can say a number like 20 and we can close the parentheses and click out of it. And now, if we play this back, you can see you have a little bit of a wiggle. If I can exaggerate this a little bit more by making this value maybe 70. And you can see what it's doing. It's wiggling the video 70 values nine times a second, all right? And this is pretty cool. This is a very simple expression, but we wanna have a lot more control over this. Uh, over this effect. So what we're going to do is create a new null object. And on this null object, we're going to add two effects. Well, actually, we're gonna add two of the same effects. We're to add two slider controls. So, you know, under expression controls and your effects and presets, take the slider control and drop it onto your null object. And you can go ahead and drop another one on there too. And we're gonna go ahead and name the first one F-R-E-Q for frequency, and the second one amp for amplitude. You don't have to name these, but I find it more organized if you do. So what we're going to do is go up to this lock button right here and click it. And now our effect controls for our null object are locked into this box. So now we can go to our explode layer, go down to our wiggle expression and go click inside of the parentheses and just delete the numbers and the comma that you have in there. So now your cursor is in the space right in front of the first parentheses. And we can go ahead over here and take this pick whip tool, click it and drag it to frequency, right? And it'll put all of this information in there. And we can click right afterwards, put a comma, go to the pick whip tool again and drag it to the amplitude slider, all right? And you should have already had a closed parenthesis there. You can see that it's not really doing anything right now and that's because our frequency and amplitude sliders are both set to zero. So if we were to crank up these sliders uh, maybe set the frequency to 17 and set the amplitude to 20, we're going to see what that does. You have a little bit of a wiggle there. So what we're going to do in this case is move right before our thing happens that we want to shake our camera, which would be right here. And we're going to set two keyframes for the frequency and amplitude sliders. Set them to zero. Then we can move ahead one frame and maybe set these to something like 28 times a second, it's moving 65 values. So now we have the wiggle turning on whenever our event or keyframe happens. So then we can move forward maybe a few frames. We can hit U on the keyboard on the null layer and move forward a few frames, maybe right about here, and set the sliders back to zero. And now we have a gradual change in the wiggle amount slowly leading back to zero. Maybe we can move these keyframes a little bit more forward in time, but you can see if I play this, the wiggle just slowly kind of goes out. In this case, it's kind of fast because my video is short, but you get the picture. Applying the wiggle effect this way also gives you more control over the actual position of your video. So now you can do something like keyframe the position, move forward another frame, maybe move it down a little bit, maybe just a little bit less, move forward a little bit, move it up, and then move over here and just set it back to 960 by 540, which is the middle of a 1080p comp, by the way. And, you know, maybe we can set these keyframes, select them all, hit F9 on the keyboard to ease them. And we have this wiggling video. Of course, this looks a little choppy, but one thing we can do is turn on the motion blur up here in the comp and turn on motion blur for your footage layer. 
It'll take a little bit more time to render out, but what you'll be left with is a very nice looking effect. All right, so now we have a pretty good looking comp. Of course, we're gonna have to get rid of these black bars around the video because, you know, there's only enough footage that actually fills up this square space in the middle of your composition and you want to extend it past that. So a quick fix that we can do is just go over here, go over to your effects and presets, and what you're going to be looking for is an effect called motion tile. And we can go ahead and drag that onto our footage layer, and we want to go to the output width and output height. We don't want to set it too high because it takes more computer resources the higher you set this value. So maybe we want to do about 120 for the width and 120 for the and it is tiling this video, so we want to select mirror edges. And this will make it look a lot better and get rid of some of that black. If you still have some black on your video, you may want to crank the width and height up a little bit more, but again, that's going to take more computer resources and slow down your render times. And now we have this composition with camera shake that can be controlled and animated via expression slider controls. I think that creating your camera shake this way is a very compatible method of creating realistic looking camera shake and I think that it'll work with whatever you're trying to do. I really want you to go out there and have fun with it. Thank you so much for listening and watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers as quick as possible and as soon as I get there I can start outputting more content to YouTube. Um, if you like this video, please leave a like. If, you, if I'm missing something or you would like to see something else uh, at a future time, please leave a comment. I am Kext Next, uh, and have a great day.